Kings cannot leave the draft, which begins in only 17 days, without addressing what? Well, I think we know, like, all right, quarterback is certainly up there. I'm not going to say that, though. I, 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 To me, it starts – I would look at, like, interior. That's where I would look at. You heard me during the break. The guard situation's a little weird. you got great tackles there in Minnesota. You can really protect and do all that. You know, the guard situation – no, right now. I mean, it's not very good, let alone there's not enough bodies there. So I, I could see that certainly, you know, being a part of the conversation in the first few rounds. We need to get a guard. The other one I would say, too, Mike, just looking at your favorite team's roster, right, is the, your defensive line, right? Your defensive line. Not only yes. maybe a defensive end for the future. I know you got Greenard and Van Ginkle will be able to rush the passer a little and do all that. But even D-tackle. Right, it's an underwhelming group. It's not, and there's nobody there where you go, "Ooh, he's a handful in the middle." You go, "Ooh, he's good. He's good. Oh, I like him." But no difference maker. I could see that being a part of the the equation as well, Mike. Yeah, I, you know, the Vikings offensively, they assume that Kevin O'Connell will get the most out of any quarterback they give him, and defensively, I think their attitude is Brian Flores is going to take whatever pieces we give him and whip him into something that works. So it's not as much of a priority. I feel like it's not as it could be or should be with other teams. But I agree with you. Defensive line is something they need to work on. The best Vikings teams have had at least one badass defensive lineman. When the offense was go, go, gadget, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, they had John Randall. In the years before that, they had Chris Dolman. They had Keith Millard. They had the purple people leaders. They they had Daniil Hunter the past seven or eight years. They I'm concerned about their their front seven, and they're not going to have a lot of opportunities to beef it up, especially if they take 11 and 23, package together, move up, throw in more stuff to go get the quarterback that they nevertheless believe is going to transform the team. They are of the mind right now, I firmly believe, that a franchise quarterback is their key to doing more than just competing for the playoffs and making it to the divisional round once every five, seven years. They want to have a team that competes and contends all the time, and they, they need a quarterback, a high-end quarterback to do it. The Chicago Bears, who will get that high-end quarterback in Caleb Williams, the first overall pick in the draft, most likely, can't leave the draft without addressing what? Well, it, it, again, this is a team that's got a pretty damn good roster. Right? That's the first thing I would I would say right off the bat. I don't think there's any area of their team that I look at and go, ooh, wow, like they're desperate here, right? I think a receiver maybe added to the group, uh, certainly up in that conversation, right? And then I think the other thing I'd probably look at more than anything is just another quality defensive lineman, whether that's a defensive tackle or a defensive end to go with Montez Sweat. That, that would probably be what I look at. Right, they got some unproven commodities at defense, a tackle. I think they're going to rely on second-year Javon Dexter there to to take over and shoulder the load. They got some guys that are good players, been around the league a little bit, but no difference maker there again, like we like we talk about. So I, you know, wide receiver, defense alignment, whether that's another pass rusher or defensive tackle. Uh, th those are the ones I think, Mike, that, that jump out to me more than anything, you know, and, and maybe a left tackle. Maybe they look at that, but I don't think Braxton Jones is all that bad at left tackle for them to, well, they'll be desperate to make a move about, at that position. Look at that. Three picks after they used the first overall selection, 975-122. I would trade down from nine if I could and get more lottery tickets, especially if there's a quarterback frenzy that's going on and somebody's trying to come up and get – you know, the fourth or fifth or even sixth guy in round one if it just goes completely crazy with quarterbacks. Um, I I would go offensive line, protect yeah. my investment, get more offensive linemen, center, guard, tackle, whatever. I want to have more than five guys that I can count on, and I want to have two or three others that, that maybe I use on a regular basis, have that rotation to counter the rotation on the defensive side of the ball because I want to keep Caleb Williams, who isn't 6'1". He's a little smaller than people realize. I want to keep him as healthy as I possibly can. And we saw what he had to deal with, not having a lot of help around him at USC. I want to make sure that's never an issue with him in Chicago. All right, there are the Packers selections in the 2024 draft, and they have plenty. Multiple picks in rounds two, three, six, and seven. 11 in all. The Packers can't leave this draft without addressing what, Christopher? I, I You know, they're like, it's, 
more about like you look at the NFC North and you go, I mean, wow. I mean, what 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 what's these teams? That that's the first thing that jumps out to me. There's just not a lot of things you need as far as any of them. I mean, the Packers, there's a reason they had the 49ers on the rope in the divisional playoff game and really should have won the game. Damn, they're good. You look at it and you go, well, I don't know. I mean, they could add a, you know, a tackle, right? Offensive lineman to the group in some capacity. Well, maybe a middle linebacker. No Devondre Campbell. Quay Walker, their first round pick, maybe hasn't lived up to total expectations there. But damn, they got two first round corners. They got Xavier McKinney at safety. They got Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, Lucas Van Ness, Kenny Clark up front. The O-line's pretty good. We know about the running back, the receivers. I mean, damn, the Packers are well, really well built. So that's kind of where I look at it, Mike. Probably something offensive line-ish or middle linebacker. But what would you be thinking if you're a backup on the Packers and they have 11 picks in the draft? If you're a veteran backup making decent money, you get a little nervous about how this is going to play out in the aftermath of the draft because what's going to happen is 11 new guys come in and some of the guys currently on the team are going to be gone. But I'm with you. There aren't many glaring weaknesses here. I'm a little nervous about the running back position because they went all in for Josh Jacobs. And if he gets banged up, then there's A.J. Dillon, who has not been spectacular. Do you develop somebody young at that position to kind of take over in a couple years? And when in doubt, I go back to the offensive line. Let's go back to the boring position that keeps your quarterback upright and allows him to flourish. They found their guy in Jordan Love. I would just say get better offensive linemen. David Bakhtiari is out, not that he has been much for them in recent years, but I would want to have bodies there to keep Jordan Love Yeah, they healthy, lost Runyon, right, and free agency, injured. right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they lost Runyon, I want to say. Didn't he go to the Giants, right? Yeah, exactly, yep. right? So, yeah, I, I would think that would be something along the lines there. But, yeah, I mean, you, we're, we're both saying that the Packers' damn team is, is well built. The defending division champions, the Detroit Lions, they can't leave the draft, which they will be hosting without what, Chris? Well, they've done a great job in free agency. They have. I mean, you look at them and you go, like, wow. I mean, we know they needed secondary players. They did a great job of trading for Carlton Davis, signed Amik Robertson from the Raiders, who's an under-the-radar, damn good cover corner. You know, they got DJ Reader as another run stopper up front. Right Again, another team you look at and go, wow, they're well-built everywhere. I mean, they really are. It's really just like, you know, adding a little, you know, uh, icing on the cake when you look at it. I, an edge rusher, I think, is the biggest thing I look at. Yes. Somebody yes. across from yes. Aiden Hutchinson, right? I know they signed Marcus Davenport, but we know he hasn't been anything to write home about to this point. You know, maybe some offensive linemen for the future. They're good right now. They don't need to worry about offensive line necessarily, like, at this second. They got Graham Glasgow. They got Zeitler, right? We know their tackles are damn good. Uh, they got a damn good center, so their O-line's good, but maybe for the future. But I think it's the edge guy across from Aiden Hutchinson. They get another good pass rusher. You go, oh, my gosh, Detroit, like, wow. I mean, they're, like, unbelievably built. Watch out for them. When the Vikings signed Marcus Davenport last year, my son's first reaction was, why? And I went through, well, he was a first-round pick. He's got untapped potential. He's not going to play more than six games. And he was in four games with three starts. And when he left for the Lions, my son's reaction was, all due respect, good. So uh, we'll see what Marcus Davenport does. But I agree with you. They need another pass rush. You can't assume this guy's going to go wire to wire. The, there have been issues that have kept him from playing. Right. And if you're not – Aware of that, you're going to pay for it because you're not going to have the depth you need. All right, let's take a break. When we return, in honor of Caitlin Clark, we will draft the NFL people with the biggest weight on their shoulders this coming season. That's next here on PFT Live. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk. 